Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we are a teaching center that focuses on hands-on courses to improve your skills and knowledge in general dentistry. Today, part six, the DL Pinlay on tooth number 11. And we've done a couple of interesting preps like this hologrind type prep here and this uh, pin retained inlay onlay over here. Today we're going to do something equally interesting that involves the use of a pin as well. And it's a DL on this canine. We're going to start with the 330 burr to create our little slit. We find this to be very helpful to get the adequate depth for optimal resistance and retention form. Now we're going to use a 169L carbide you could also use maybe a 55 burr and tip the burr, but you can use the 169L, keeping it perpendicular to the lingual surface and tipping the burr a little bit to get the proper divergence to this inlay portion. Once you got the flares in the proper depth and draw, you're now ready to look at dealing with this interproximal area and we're not going to place a box we're going to use a hollow grind like we just did on the previous project and in order to do that we're going to start out with a burr that's slightly smaller than the 7404 7102 which will be great because it'll easily get between the teeth and we can start the hollow grind procedure So now that we have a little bit of a hollow grind started, we can continue with maybe getting a little bit more of that completed, getting some of the finish lines done out near the facial, the gingival, and the lingual. But we really can't rely on this burr to give us the bulk that we need for the casting to be made very accurately. So now we're going to switch over to the 7404. holding the burr along the line of draw of the preparation that you established on the lingual, just tipping the burr lingually, just allow the burr to do the work for you, creating a little bit of a bulk in the middle of the interproximal area. You can verify your draw by taking the burr and moving it up to the lingual area, making sure everything's going to draw okay. So the preparation is getting close to being finished, but there are some undermined enamel areas and maybe some areas where we want to increase the taper just a little bit. And for that, the 7901 is very helpful. You know, the bottom half of this burr pretty much creates the draw. There, that's a little smoother, a little bit more draw. And if you have any undermined enamel, you can use the 232 tucker, which is used for the distal, and you can just knock off any loose enamel. You can see it just easily carving away there, kind of in a reverse motion. It knocks it off pretty easily. At this point, you want to evaluate and see if you have enough retention form. Now, if there's a large a lingual area that has a very uh, retentive dovetail that extends up and down the prep that way, you probably could just take the impression. But in this case, we have a very small lingual dovetail and we have a fairly large interproximal bale area. So for that reason, let's add a little more retention with the use of a pin. And as we've done in the past, we're gonna make a countersink and a pilot drill with a two round burr. Let's remember to place this only in dentin and away from the DEJ. So you can barely see the little pilot drill there but we know that's where the pin is going to go and this is an RGS-1 instrument and I'm going to place it right about there and I want to follow the line of draw of the preparation. So traditionally we can use a 169L or a 168 but today I'm going to utilize an 859-010 diamond because I found these to cut more efficiently on their ends than the carbide burrs. I feel like they're a little safer to use. So the burr is being held parallel to the long axis of the preparation at an angle as the prep is and we go down approximately a millimeter maybe 1.5 millimeters.
you can see the finished pinhole is located far enough away from the enamel margin in Denton and it's about the same as the RGS1. It's pretty deep so this will be a nice retentive pin. You're probably wondering how the heck do you take an impression of this and that's coming up in the next series on impression taking for this particular quadrant. The mystery will be solved but you can see there's lots of retention there and everything should draw. This preparation probably takes no more than about 10 minutes to do. And the final inlay will look something like this. So I want to remind you that we have a gold course coming up in December of each year. I'd love to have you visit us. And uh, performing this uh, quadrant of inlays has been a real joy. Uh, I'm really excited about the next few uh, you know, parts of this because we're going to show you impression taking, how to provisionalize, and uh, how to take impressions of with those pinholes. And then, of course, the castings and the delivery of those in the very near future. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe, and let me know what you think. Thank you.